welcome to the NBS show, episode number 283. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. Hello, man. I sense a thing called deja vu happening. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Every now and again. True. Like, we've been repeating this again. Deja vu. Oh, well. We'll get over it eventually. Yeah, I think there's a glitch in the Matrix. But still, um, talking about glitches, Silver Quill is joining us too. Oh, you're calling me glitches? That's me! <laughs> That's so me! Why are you so mean to me? I'm doing it now, but now I'm all, now I'm all hurt. Oh. Uh-huh. I'm a, I'm a delicate flower and you've plucked the petals. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. So, by the way, um, New episode came out. I highly enjoyed it. Review will be out eventually. <laughs> eventually. Anywho, let's jump right into the news. We start off with local news. Uh, local for me, uh, international for them. And the Chinese Moon Festival is an event where people go out and carry lanterns and stuff. Like, There's more to it than what I know, but what I experience is all about the lanterns and the mooncakes which is really yummy and fun and it was well kind of a childhood thing for me and i remember back in the days you have lanterns of roosters and cars and so whatnot and you put candles in them to illuminate the whole lantern and it looks cool it looks awesome and until the candle burned the whole lantern because lanterns made of paper and plastic and what do you think happens like fire eats everything sounds brilliant to me oh yeah i mean <laughs> till you <laughs> uh let's let's just no no i'm just glad that it's not a festival where everyone gets together and flashes their posteriors at everyone <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, no, it's not that. It's not that. But uh, as time goes on, we get more modern settings. Like we get more pop culture items, like the minions from the Despicable Me. We get the whatever Shrek. I, I think that's a popular one. And with any pop culture items, we get the ponies. And I, uh, I have to note something. If it's not Official by Hasbro, he ain't looking good. And <laughs> the one with Cadence here, he ain't official by Hasbro. Uh oh. <laughs> Tell me what you see, Silver. And also, Twy, what, what do you see? I see Nightmare Fuel. Silver? Oh my heavens, yes, I remember seeing this. <laughs> Look, this is Cadence after she's eaten something and had an allergic reaction. It, it, it happens. It just happens. Uh, you, you talk about them big anime eyes, right? <laughs> I think I think these goes beyond even anime eyes. I think these are mutant bullfrog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but there's a consolation for this. The, somehow the same place they're selling the traditional um, lantern design, and they have ponies on them, like they have um, paper or cloth or something like that, and they have their normal ponies. Whew. At least we don't have nightmare fuel, right? We also don't on those lanterns. We don't have. Princess Twilight. That is free wings Twilight. Uh, th- 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 that could be a debate for another day. Thank you, Larson. Uh, but let's head on to the next news. And the next news is a bit of a somber one. Uh, how do I put this? Um, the movie is coming out on October 6th for North America and October 12th for me locally. And Twilight, when's yours again? November 6th? November 2nd. Ah, November 2nd. That's good. So, the movie's coming out soon, and I think last week was the premiere, was it, Silva? Well, yes, they, an early screening for uh, for folks, just to get get their ponies a bit faster and build resentment within the community. So bitter. Oh, yeah, and talking about the bitter feelings, uh, s- someone thought it was a good idea to share the experience on a recording device. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a PSA for people who are going to watch the movie. Don't share. I know that you want to rewatch it again in the comfort of your own home, but recording it on a recording device, mobile phone, handy cam, and so on, GoPro. I I heard GoPros all the rage. It's not a good idea, and it's highly illegal. Twa, you want to take this one? 
I think you've, you've covered a lot of it. It's illegal, but it's also incredibly rude and disruptive to the people around you in the cinema. I mean, even if you don't get kicked out, which would be the worst for you and everyone around you because of the massive ruckus it would cause, pulling a device out, even if you're not, you're not recording, like just people pulling out phones in a cinema is rude and distracting. That is true. That is true. And Silver, you're, you're the American here, and I'm guessing that you don't experience this a lot. What do you think, man? Well, at first, as the only American in this, allow me to say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. Why? Well, America has a lot to apologize for right now. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're all sorry. <laughs> Flame the annoying orange. <laughs> that has double meaning. But in any case, with this, yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, we ju- just watched Kingsman the Golden Circle. We stayed through the credits because Marvel has trained me well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the very last thing is this semi-passive aggressive message. This took thousands of hours of, of many, many people working to say, hey, you need to support the industry. And I agree with that. I, I appreciate that folks may feel a stigma about going to a theater where people are not expecting bronies. I mean, even even after several years of this, people are still can be still be a little weirded out. But the only way you get another pony movie or the franchise continues is if it makes a lucrative business. And the only way for that to happen is to sell movie tickets, sell DVDs, all that good stuff. So recording it is just shooting the the entire fandom in the foot. Uh, a short-term gain for a long-term loss, which is something people really struggle with. Also, just looking at the updates, apparently this was a girl and her boyfriend who were recording. And so both of them got kicked out. But sadly, and this is what really makes this a bitter feeling, one of the storyboard artists got mistakenly mixed up in this and got kicked out as well. So they caught someone who worked on this from seeing their premiere. Man, that is just insulting. That is just adding salt. To, sorry, that is adding salt to injury? That's the phrase, right? Insult to injury. And honestly, in all truth, I th- I'd say you definitely can't say this is a victimless crime. The thing is, I- I've said this before, and, the th- and I'll say it again. The thing about doing a movie or creating, uh, creating media or creating entertainment is that it's a thankless job. The people... The stars get the, all the limelight, like uh, Tara Strong, Cheryl, Cheryl, uh, the Sabretooth guy, and um, Gamora, and also a few other people. And the people doing the backgrounds, like um, doing the animation, doing the drawings, doing the scripting, doing the music, they don't get the limelight. All they have to do is judged by how much money the movie's making. And with ponies, it's a bit different because of how we respond to people. Because, okay, we know the music's done by Daniel Ingram. We know the script is done by Megan McCartney. But we don't know who animates it. We don't know who does stuff. And I even say it's right even if we do. So by going to the movie, by watching the movie... You're supporting them too. And also, if you want a second movie, like Silver says, go watch it again and again and again. Like, think about the Transformers. How did that got five movies now? If I'm right, five? Uh, look, I'm sorry. There's only one Transformer from, for me, and it was in 1986, and it scarred me for life. <laughs> okay. But- but not like the new Transformers just make me a cynical. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, because people watched that and it was a success. So now if you want the second movie to come out, go watch it. Go support it because it's a fun experience. And also buy the DVD or Blu-ray. Highly collectible by three. Yes. And it has a trading card, if I remember right. But it ain't Mr. T, so it's worthless. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate a fellow Linkara fan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but <laughs> let's move on to the next news. And the next one is awesome because we get more Sunset Shimmer. And I think Twice happy with this one, right? 
more shim sham is always a good thing. Always. From what I'm reading here, okay. Tales of Canterlot High is going to be a new Netflix series possibly scheduled for October 10. And this is a huge possibly because from what I'm reading here, it's going to be released in Australia first. The news they got this from was on an Australian site. So it may come out in Australia only at that time. Or it may come out on Netflix all up, or it might not come out at all. I wouldn't trust an Australian news site half the time. <laughs> uh, but still, more shim sham is glim glam. Yes. So, um, from what I'm understanding here, it's an actual 20, 20 minute episode starring the girls from Prince Lord High. And I know a lot of you people out there are not big fans of the equestrian girl lines of series but me and Twy here are big fans what about you silver you a fan i've grown to enjoy it more than the first movie first movie was just sort of well that happened really sunset is the defining trait of this she is the unique element that you can't find in equestria mostly because she done ditched equestria but uh i have fun with it and i usually enjoy it i'd be curious to see how they handle the high school setting because I, I always promote you need to make it more than just an American high school. Because between between us, high school's kind of boring. Ah, uh, true that, true that. But if you up the silliness, then we can talk. Ah, that's also true. And for this one, um, there's a short preview of it. I think it aired in Hascon. And the synopsis is... Well, okay, um, I'm, I'm not going to go spoilerific here. I think it's on EQD... Probably, I think. If you want, go check it out there. But it also premieres the girls in their new outfits. And that's cool in my books. So I'm really excited for it and I can't wait to see more of it. So yay! Awesome! More more ponies, more yays. And talking about yays, um, who here likes stickers? I work for a sticker company <laughs> and so uh, I, have, I have to adhere to certain standards. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, all right. Well, what about you, Twy? You like them stickers? I sort of had to give up on liking stickers when the last thing I put lots of stickers on got thrown in the dump. Oh, but you know what? The, the good thing about these stickers are they're ponies, one, and they're digital. But the bad part for some people is it's only on the Facebooks. Okay, no? I'm not hugely active on Facebook. I don't think I'd make a, a big to-do about this. So you do have a Facebook. All righty then. Well, anywho, um, Facebook has the My Little Pony movie stickers out there. And if you know anything about Facebook stickers, they're just some kind of enhancement to communicate with your buddies. Things like hi, laugh, sing, and so on. Just imagine Facebook stickers and whatnot. And the best part is that it's free and available for everyone. Um, I got it here in Malaysia, and I'm thinking Twy can get it in Australia. And Silver, if you do use the Facebooks, you can get it on your end too. Just go to the Facebook sticker thingy and do search for My Little Pony. And yeah, you, it, it's there. It, it's there. It's fun. It's another new way to communicate with stickers. It, it's nothing really groundbreaking, but at least it's ponies. And I think they did it with the classic Power Rangers too. So yay, if you're a big fan of that too. But anywho, that's the news for this week. So let's head into the next topic. And said topic would be, what have you been doing with our week? And Twy, what have you been doing, man? Between studying like crazy, because I'm behind in my uh, Certificate 3 course, I've been binge-watching the Total Drama cartoon series and playing the game Fortnite. Fortnite. I think I've heard of it. It's the one where you can construct forts uh, with traps and all that and fight waves of zombies. Ah, all right, all right. Ah, yes, Red vs. Blue did a immersion episode on that. Oh, okay. It's not a bad game. Awesome, awesome. Would you recommend it? Uh, yes, but I would say at this point, probably wait until it gets its full re release next year when it's free to play because... 
for early access, a lot of the places you can buy it from, it charges you the price of a full-fledged game. Ouch. So, yeah, it's... I would say for early access, is not worth $60 or more. And this game, from most places, is charging more. Oh, wow, okay. And what about you, Silver? What have you been doing for your week? Uh, th- this was not a fun week. Oh, my. Uh, uh, like I say, I work for a print company that does stickers. And the end of the third quarter, the September through October period, I believe, is very, very hectic. So there was a lot of stress this week. On the more positive side, we celebrated my mother's birthday and reminisced about our recent family trip in celebration of my father's birthday. So that was that was thoroughly enjoyable. Friends and I rewatched Blade Runner in anticipation of the new movie. And I've been trying to plug away at graphics for my next review while getting hypnotized by some rounds of Overwatch. And if I'm not mistaken, Destiny 2, right? Yes, a friend and I from high school, we hop online and we grind a little of Destiny 2, dos, to uh, just catch up and shoot the breeze. Oh. And shoot aliens. <laughs> okay, I need to know the story behind 2, because I did. Rem- I-, I think you did a quote-unquote full review or thought on the game when we did the discussion show way back when. I- that was a while back. You-, you guys just say, hey, 2 came out, let's do it. Well, the story behind the game is that once upon a time, there was this magical uh, company called Bungie, and they wanted to make lots of money. And they promised everyone this game will be good for 10 years. But it only lasted for two years, and then they made another. Like, (laughs) please give us more money. This one has microtransactions. Aye, aye, aye. And the fans were like, okay, here's my money. (laughs) Oh, well. But uh, the the actual story story within the, the game... As it is now, there is a very militant alien race, but their elite warriors, the Red Legion, have launched an attack on the last city of mankind, and they've basically occupied it. So now, uh, you as the la- one of the last few uh, guardians who has any power to resist has to take the fight to the enemy, rebuild your forces, and find a way to liberate the city. And it's it's pretty effective in bringing you low and having you start from the ground up once again. The characters get m- more prominent roles as they did in The Taken King. But uh, it's short and maybe a little bit anticlimactic. And then once the story is done, there's always the question of, well, what do I do now? What's next? And that is a hard question to answer sometimes. I think Zero Punctuation had the best answer for what to do once you finish a story. Go to a place and shoot some lads. <laughs> Yeah, that is the general, that is the general MO. Just go over here and shoot some people, go over here. Although, he was talking about still in the game, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes, in, in the game. Oh, thank goodness. But I will say, there's this thing called a raid, where you get like a party of six together and you go on this super complicated, uh, adventure with instant death experiences. And people have said that it can take upwards of 10 hours. And I'm just like, no. I, I can't. I cannot make that investiture. You crazy. Why are you thinking I'm going to spend 10 hours on a game? Y'all crazy. Well, some people can do it, but I, I don't know. I mean, like, the 10 hour read in WoW was. Oh yeah. that, that was. That was something else, man. Like, that was something else. Are you, do you have to do it all in one sitting? I mean, you can't, like, save your progress and come back? I don't think you can. Like, um. I haven't played WoW, like, you need to ask a WoW expert, but from what I heard, nah, like, it's all in one go. Or was it Final huh. Fantasy? I forgot, but still, it's something like that. Either or, that's brutal. Yeah, yeah raids are go hard or go home. There are no point, no potty breaks on, on, on this ride. <laughs> oh, you could always do the nah. South Park thing. Nah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. I... <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, I uh, I don't know if you guys have ever watched the show, uh, the YouTube series Battlefield Friends. Oh no, not yet. Okay, explain. Uh, well, they it, it's sort of it's an animated series that pokes fun at the Call of Duty, uh, at the Battlefield series. Mm-hmm. Oh, I nearly made everybody angry there. <laughs> but uh, one of the things is that to reach Colonel One Hundred, they have uh, a bucket. Okay. For, you know, to sit upon, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. 
and they're and they devote a great deal of time and energy to talking about this bucket. <laughs> okay. Even with some sound effects. <laughs> okay. Oh god. And yet the Colonel 100 is one of the most badass characters in uh, in the series. I mean, he talks in this gravelly voice. He can defy the rules of the game because he's just so awesome at it. He is the battlefield. Oh, wow. This series got to be watched. But he's like, if you're in the bathroom, you're not getting, you're not playing the game. If you're not playing the game, you're not getting good. So you get the bucket. (laughs) I have to watch this series. Battlefield Friends by Hank and Jed. (coughs) We'll try. We'll try. Oh, and in the end, we purposely treat him wrong. That's a joke. Uh, But (laughs) thank you, Silver. That was highly, highly. uh, You got me to laugh. Good. So I need a lozenge now. (laughs) Uh, But anywho, as for myself, I've been... Well, I've been playing a few games. Um, last week I mentioned that I got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And it's a fun game. Um, it has its qualms, like character roster not being there, graphics being subpar, and so on. And let's just say that it's fundamentally fun. It works well. As a game, it works well. But the looks and so on, it's not so much. You know how some things like it controls fine, it plays fine, but the look is just not for me. You, you know those kind of games, right? Oh yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom is that. A lot of people are poo-pooing it because, well, they don't like it for some one reason or another. Personally, for me, I find it entertaining, but I like the Marvel Capcom series. I've played it since the first one, so call me a fan. But another one I've been playing is Killer Instinct. It just recently released on Steam, and Color Me Impress. That game is wow, wow. That that, that game, I, I got no idea. Like maybe for you Xbox One owners out there who've been playing the game for a while now, it's null by it, whatever it is. But for me, I... Wow. The introduction, the dojo or the trainee mode is out of my mind. Like, wow. Whew. I, I'm, I'm impressed. And I'll be playing more of it soon enough. Other than that... Magic the Gathering, a new set came out. Bought some cards. <laughs> so, there goes my money. Yay. <laughs> oh, I have a problem. And I think that's about been my week. A lot of gaming and card gaming. So, yay. Oy, oy, oy. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themistrogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show. For me personally, I am Norman Sanzo. Twy, where can the good people find you, man? They can find me on Facebook and YouTube under Double Point Productions. They can find me on Film, uh, film Fiction and DeviantArt under Twilight Genesis. And you can find me on Twitter at Midnight underscore Pint. Alrighty then. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you Nancys can find me on DeviantArt under Silver Quill with a lot of hyphens. And Twitter under Silver Quill with a lot of hyphens. And oh, I really do need a lozenge now. Uh, and also on YouTube, just do a search for After the Fact and I shall appear. True that, true that. And a lot of awesome videos. That's how I found you. And okay, I, I, I need to tell the story. Um, this is, what time is it? Okay, it's going to be a short story because uh, when at Sea Pony Con, um, someone came up to me, they say they are a fan of the review show, they enjoy it highly, and they ask, um, how did I get Silver on the show? The short and simple answer is, I kidnapped him and he's in my basement. <laughs> no, no, that was a joke. Somebody help! <laughs> no, the, the, the real answer is, I just invited him on. Like, I just asked and he said yes. Luckily for me, yay. And I think I invited you around your Power Ponies review, was it? 
Oh, around about that time. It was pretty early on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, well, from that point on, I said, like, um, we were doing the season for Ender, and we just, I just give you a message saying, hey, um, you interested in doing this? And one thing led to another, and you're here. Awesome. Yes, we just took our time and let nature take its course. Indeedy. Get get some Barry White playing in here. Oh, God, no. So, yeah, um, do I highly recommend go watching Silver on the YouTube. His videos are nothing like the... Oh, sorry, um, how, do I, how do I word this? It's out of the ordinary. It's his own style. Like, it's very silverish. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, words, I can't think. Words. <laughs> they are informative. And entertaining, oh, especially okay. when Silver gets blown up. <laughs> I appreciate that, Genesis. Your ability to withstand gratuitous amounts of bodily harm will never cease to impress me. You okay, man? So that's where my dynamite went. <laughs> there we go. Uh... Yes, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also, do subscribe to our other podcast, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, where me, Silver, and Sapphire will, well, we always do a review review show talking about the episode, comics, and movies. When I say movies, it has something to do with the Equestria Girl movies. But now since we have the real movie, well, that will be something special in it. Oh, uh, yes. The, the movie, The Anticipation. The fact I'm not I'm not stealing it online because I want to be honest about this. Yes, and also all the comic books related to the movie. Oy, uh, reviewing this movie is going to be interesting. That's all I can say. And besides reviewing ponies, we also do other things like <laughs> Kung Pao. We we did that one. <laughs> the three of us. Wee 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 wee. Yes. Uh, besides the movies of Kung Pao, we also did Darkwing Duck comics and so on. I mean, um, the review and discussion show is free form. We like to do whatever we like. So do catch it. There on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Over there with every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast. I think a few days earlier than what is going to be posted on the YouTubes and also iTunes. And also deleted and exclusive content. And a big thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, i like to thank Lurker Cat. And Dracotoria, Starstream, and also Master of Black. Thank you guys for all the awesome support. You have been really, really awesome. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another awesome episode of the MBS show. See ya. Cheers. Adios. Adios.